Hi, welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle, and today I'm going to be sharing our summer homeschool plan. So if you're new here, I have a 10-year-old fourth grader, I have a six-year-old first grader, three-year-old son. Today I'm going to be sharing our homeschool plans. Now we are year-round homeschoolers, so we don't necessarily stop, but we do switch things up in summer. So first I'm going to show you the kids each individual <laughs> Um, core subjects that we will continue doing and then uh, the thing that really changes up is our group subjects. So I'm going to start with my 10 year old fourth grader. So she'll be going into fifth grade next year. So we do continue math and if some form of language arts during the summer because I really don't want them to have that slide. So my fourth grader is still working through this and she yes she is fourth grade in the third grade level because she was in public school K through second. So when I brought her home to homeschool in third grade, there was some substantial gaps that I noticed that we had to go back and correct. But one thing I'm making a change in the summer is before we would do the textbook one day and the workbook the next day. Because she, those gaps have been filled and because I think a lot of her math anxiety has been eased, she's ready to do both at the same time. So what we've been doing is we will go with the textbook lesson together and then she will do this independently in the same day. Because again, that math anxiety has gotten a lot better. Her stamina for math has gone up. So I think she's fully capable of doing both at the same time. So we will continue with that. So her math will continue. For language arts, we are gonna, because we did IEW level one last summer, it's a six month program, I believe that's correct. So it did take us into the fall of this school year. So that being said, we started liking like grade four, I want to say in October instead of August when we started our regular curriculum. So she is still finishing up liking literature. So she's on week 27 and it's 36 weeks. So we're not quite finished this. What I'm going to do, because I do want to incorporate IEW, the next level, we'll put a picture here because I haven't purchased it yet, because we aren't gonna start actual summer homeschool schedule till the beginning of June. So May we will continue our normal stuff, but June we will um, switch over. So starting in June, she will continue doing this. And what I've been doing for the composition work is I've just been pulling the resources from IEW that she learned to do the composition assignments. And that's worked perfectly well. And she's really practiced a lot of that level one stuff she learned with IEW. So when she starts in June, she will start the next level of IEW. That is more intensive. The you know lessons can be about 40 to an hour long. So what I'm gonna have her do is continue the reading. So she'll continue reading the books suggested in Lightning Lead. She'll continue to do the grammar in here and she will continue to answer the comprehension questions. But I'm taking out the rest of the composition for the year and she will do IEW in place of that. And that I think that will work completely fine. Again, she's getting older and her stamina is definitely building. I've noticed that she can do her reading and grammar in this in probably 20 minutes, 25 minutes maybe. So I don't think adding on the writing component of IEW will be too complicated. Again, I will pick up IEW sometime this month in May because we will start in June and that's already in the budget and everything. I will link up above my budget video if you want to see that. So she will continue her dimensions and she will continue her lightning lit minus the composition in this and we'll replace it entirely with IEW. So those are the things and she will continue her typing. She does typing practice once a week. I have her do two, less, two lessons and that's just a free um, program. I'll link it down below that she uses for typing. But those are the core subjects that are remaining for my 10 year old fourth grader. Now on to my first grader. And again, she's a hybrid because she didn't really um, switch into first grade until about January since she has a fall birthday. So she's half the year she'll be finishing up first grade and by the end of the year she'll be going into second grade. So she will, as the same as my oldest daughter, she'll continue her dimensions 1A. And one thing I'm gonna be doing is incorporating addition facts that stick because she's definitely getting, she likes to do a lot of mental math she doesn't like manipulatives or anything of that. So I really want to incorporate this because I did use this with my oldest daughter and it really helped work on those addition skills because she's getting into 
um, you know, double digit edition now, and she likes to do it mentally. So I think reinforcing it with the Kate Snow edition facts that stick, and eventually we'll do subtraction facts that stick. But instead of doing, I think, both these at the same time, I think because she's so far ahead in this, that maybe taking a break and doing the addition facts that can stick just solely for her math and maybe picking this up a couple times a week instead of every day. Because again, she's getting really far ahead in this and she's fully capable of the problems and understanding the concepts, but it's just becoming a lot of problems, like three pages long. And that's a bit much, I think, for a six-year-old. So we can, one of the ways I'm slowing it down for her is working on this skill set as well. So that's what's gonna you know, change a little with her math, but she will continue math. She will also continue all about reading level two. This is actually going really well. I feel like level one, we, like a snail's pace went through it, but she is already on lesson 22. So you can see in the book, she's doing really well with that. We'll continue those lessons. And along with that, um, for her supplemental reading, the reading practice I have, I switch between the journeys and the trophies books. And again, I have a, um, video on that if you want to see the inside of those but she will read those as her readers just for fluency practice and just practicing the skills she's learned and then of course she will continue handwriting practice and we use core knowledge skills for that again core knowledge completely free online i will link it down below she she's finishing up the skills section in the kindergarten unit because that's a lot of handwriting practice and there are some phonics things in there as well but she will continue that. And again, not too much. She gets it done pretty quickly. So the big changes that will be happening are group subjects. So we will finish Torchlight in about two weeks, which is exciting. And that encompasses history. And we will finish out science as well. So we did not get through, again, we use core knowledge science, fourth grade. We did not get through all the units this year because we did an extended human body unit last, or this school year using core knowledge and we use multiple levels for that. So we are only on investigating waves, but I'm gonna take a break from, from science during the summer just to kind of bring in some different subjects. I mean, if my kids really are, <laughs> wanna do it, I'll bring it back in. They do enjoy the core knowledge science units. But I think it's taking, you know, fine. I don't feel like we need to be exactly on grade level with core knowledge when it comes to science. So we'll pick up the next school year where we left off. So we're gonna finish out the investigating waves unit and then we'll be done with um, science until August. So the group subjects that we are going to bring in. So for June and July, I have chosen two main subjects to bring in. So for June, I'm looking at my computer here because I'm not going to remember it unless it's written down. So for June, the two, we're actually we're bringing three things in for June. So I've talked about this in what I'm excited about video curriculum. We'll be introducing philosophy. And again, check out that book if you want to see specifics. But this is just introducing a philosophical thought and just discussion questions. And I think it'll be really fun and it'll be, it's not gonna be something time consuming, it's mostly discussion based. So we're looking forward to including that. Another thing that we will be including is art. Now we did an awesome job with art this past school year. And I'm really proud of myself because our first year homeschooling, this is our second year homeschooling. Our first year, art kind of got left by the side. We do it occasionally, but it was never consistent. So we have done art consistently twice a week this last school year. So we did her court art and that was usually on Tuesdays. And then we did with Torchlight, there is a suggested book called Paint Lab and it takes you through different projects and stuff. So we've talked about both like Hardcore brings in more of the techniques and, and understanding art and how to look at art and different types of art, so the more technical aspect of it, but it also includes a project with every lesson. And again, you can get those books off thrift books for, you know, really cheap, like five, six dollars. 
So that worked really well. So I think they got a lot of that instructional technique stuff and learning about different types of art. And then we did the paint lab, which was a lot of just exploring mixed media art and different types of art. There was always an artist highlighted with whatever we did too. So they, we were you know, talking about different artists as well. So that has gone really well, but I really wanted to have something more structured and you know, a lesson for art. And I came across this curriculum. I was watching the Mama Librarian, awesome. YouTube channel. I will link the video I watched down below, but it was Atler Art and she was, she goes through and shows you how it all works. So I highly recommend checking that, checking that out, but I really liked how it was organized. It really reminded me of like elementary school art class, which I loved and I thought was so fun. And I really like, what I really like about the program is it's a teacher on a you know board or whatever she's doing teaching the lesson an actual art teacher and you can the camera pans and shows you what other kids artwork looks like and i thought that was really cool not to see how other kids are doing it because especially if you have more of a perfectionist mindset that oh it's not looking exactly like the teachers it helps to see that other students are using it as well and it, i will say that the videos are more dated they definitely remind me of something out of the 90s like i said something i would see in art class but looking at other programs, a lot of like artistic pursuits, I consider the videos to be more outdated as well. So I'm not so concerned that the videos are outdated, um, just that it's more direct instruction and something I can step away from if need be, because I did do a lot of hands-on art this year, which was great, but I want someone else to be doing the main instruction for that. So I was looking at the, because you can do it streaming and online and download the lessons and all that, and was, they have different modules. So I was looking at level three, I believe, because again, it goes, I think, to the six to 10 year age range, which I really like because my youngest daughter is six, my oldest daughter is 10. So it fits perfectly with those both age ranges. So that's great. And then the modules are only four lessons or four weeks long, which is perfect because it takes up that June time span that we can do it once a week for four weeks and we have an entire art lesson. But looking at the program, I saw that it was around 40 or $50 for one module. And one of my things I really like to do, especially with curriculum is look for used options. So I did, and I think right now is a perfect time to be looking for those options because a lot of people are selling them towards the end of the year. So I looked at eBay and I found an older DVD version of it. So it's not the live streaming, um, but it came with three modules, so module A, B, and C for level three. It came with the entire teacher lesson plan, and then it came with um, art study pictures as well. And it was all 50 bucks. So I was like, that works for me. I can get all the modules, I get an art study. And if it's a little bit of an outdated DVD, that's completely fine. I really don't think my kids are going to mind that much. So I did pick this up from eBay for $50. And I'll show you really quick what's in it. And again, if there's anything I show you here that you want to actually see like a flip through, let me know. But it comes with, you can see the DVDs. So I got level three because it's that six to 10 age. I got module A, module B, and module C. And again, are we gonna get through all these during the summer? Absolutely not. I think we'll be good if we get through A. Um, but again, you can see the, it's a little bit more outdated. You can tell by the clothing and just the camera quality is a little more outdated, but that's, you know, it's workable, it's fine, it's art. So it came with the teacher, that box, came with the teacher program. And I like that this is actually already put together so I don't have to do anything. <laughs> so it has, Actually, let me flip you around and give you a better look. So we can see it has it divided into A, B, and C, and then the print guides. So it just goes over kind of the program, but getting to level three, it's got your lesson plans, which I really like, the materials, the procedure for teaching again, and get, this is all on the video lesson, so you don't necessarily have to have the teacher plans um, I wasn't originally going to plan to using the teacher plans. I was just going to use the material list to know, make sure I had the stuff on hand, and then have the kids watch the 
um, DVD and follow along with the art lesson, but you can see we have a drawing lesson, a color lesson, a shape lesson, And then we go into another drawing lesson, a media lesson. So there's really a lot here, and I like that it's direct instruction, and then goes into level B. But what I really like about this is that it comes with the art prints, at least the used copy I did. So it tells you, you know, how to critique art, and then it has um, describing artwork, analyzing artwork, and then it has the artwork itself. So the artwork is in here and again i think if you get the online version this is an option to have as well so you can see here we have a cardstock copy of starry night and then we have an intro to the artist about the artwork and then discussion questions and activities and extensions. So I really like that it has that aspect. So we will probably do an art lesson once a week and then we'll take out one of the art cards and use those discussion based things. So we do a drawing lesson about a tree and then we would do one of the art cards and that will be our art lesson for the week. So I'm really excited about this program. So for June, we'll do philosophy, we'll do an art lesson every week with the art study, and then the other thing we'll be doing for the month of June is bringing in foreign language. This is something that I wanted to incorporate during the school year, but we didn't get to, which is fine because summer is there to help us with that. And it's more, I think, fun and looser in the summer. So it's easier to take on things like foreign language. So for my six-year-old, she wanted to continue with Spanish. We used Song School Spanish. Now, both of them did Song School Spanish, our first year homeschooling. So last year, and it worked really well. And my six-year-old wants to continue with Spanish, and this is perfect for her. It's, you know, learning through song. And she's at the age level where she can do, um, you know, the workbook pages, and I just make copies of this so I can use it with, um, you know, more my son if he decides to take Spanish or if my daughter decides to switch back. So the, she's fully capable of, you know, circling things, filling in the blank. And it's perfect for her. She really enjoyed it and she wants to go back to it. So we'll be doing Spanish. So we'll be doing foreign language Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And I will share my schedule. That will be my next video after this. How I'm getting all this to fit into our summer schedule. But I didn't want to, you know, overwhelm you with both aspects. So that video will be the next one you see. So what I did for my 10 year old fourth grader for French. Now this was actually really hard to find a program because a lot of them are just um, immersive programs. So like Duolingo, Rosetta Stone. My daughter doesn't want to just learn to speak French. She wants to learn how to read it and write it. Of course, right? <laughs> and a lot of the programs are either aged really young or really so like middle school, high school level because you're bringing in that grammar aspect and things like that. And there's just not a lot of French options. And I was strangely finding a lot of them that had like religious undertones to them. I don't know why that is connected, but I was looking obviously for a secular French curriculum and it was harder to find. So one of the things I came across was Oak Meadow and Oak Meadow has a foreign language or I believe they called world languages in their program, but foreign language was only an option if you were enrolled in the Oak Meadow online component of it, and it was also high school. So neither of those options worked, obviously, for my going to be fifth grader, but I did um, look at their sample for the high school level, and I noticed what curriculum they were using, so I looked more into that, and it actually worked out really well. So what I found was, this is the suggested um, French curriculum used in Oak Meadow. And again, they just, I believe Oak Meadow writes their own, you know, how you use it, but this is the textbook they use for it. So I was looking at, oh, sorry, that's the teacher. This is the textbook. And I was looking at it and I was like, okay, can I adapt this to a younger age? And I was looking at this website, the, I believe it's Holt. I will link it down below. I was looking at the website. I noticed that there are two versions and if I would have done my research better, I could have saved myself money because I bought this version and I bought this version. Again, I got these used off thrift books for $6. Teacher guide I think was like 10. 
but there was two versions. I was like, okay, so maybe one's an older version. No, this is just solely for if you're taking high school track course. And then A and B are as if you try to take the middle school um, pacing course, which is a much slower version. So it's the same thing as this, but done in a slower pace. And I was like, that will be perfect. And the teacher guide, what's nice about the teacher guide is that it has in here, you know, the lesson plan laid out, everything like that. Now, if you want, you can get the grammar worksheets and all those things used as well, super cheap. I even got, I think, the DVD that goes with it. It was maybe $4 off for books. Now, I could have saved myself money if I had just researched a little bit more because you don't actually need to do these if you get the online component of it. Now, they have options, and it took me a while to figure all this out. It, they have options to buy the student um, book online, the student resources online, the teacher guides online, all that is online through the website. And I think to buy the student resources, so it would be the student book and then all the resources, so the things you normally see on here, it was like $30, $35 for a year subscription. It was completely doable, completely doable. So I am glad I got the teacher guide though, because I do prefer a physical copy of that. I mean, I could print it out, but I don't, I, I'm a book person. I actually do prefer books. So it lays out the lesson for you. And what's nice is it has different tracks you can take. So for your um, high school students, this is the track you would take. For your slower paced learner, so middle school, this is the path you would take. And I think middle school is suggested for starting in sixth grade. My daughter will be in fifth, so I'm not too concerned. We can always slow it down if need be. If you wanna see you know, a flip through of how I am plan on incorporating it, let me know, I'll gladly do that, but it would take a lot to show you what's in there right now. So we will actually be incorporating the middle school path. So we'll do 1A and 1B. I can't, I don't think we'll get to 1B at all. But what I really like is it starts each lesson with a culture corner type thing. So you're learning about France, you're learning about historic things, you're learning about buildings, you're learning about the culture. So that's the introduction. Some uh, even has map work. So you learn about the geography of France and then you get into the lessons and it does have the online component, which I have to say is amazing because the um, it lets you trial out the online component and it lets you trial it out in multiple different languages. If you just select which one you want to do from the scroll bar but the free trial is like three four five months long i got it i don't know three months ago i think it almost is six months long the free trial so that's amazing it lets you access all these resources and look at them and it shows you the video components and everything like that now is it a little bit more teacher intensive yes because you need to be able to look at the teacher plan the lesson plan and be able to pull the resources. It's not just like laid out, bam, bam, bam. It's laid out like a typical public school lesson plan would be laid out, which I'm completely fine working. I've done it in the past. So lesson planning does not scare me or navigating it, but it will take a little bit of effort from your part, which I know some people aren't into, but I will tell you right away, it's not just once you understand it and you can navigate it, it will be open and go, but until that, you're going to have to figure it out. You're going to have to put some effort into it. So what's nice is that the printables here um, on the online component of it allow you to print out the slower paced path. So you have a lesson, you have the um, video online component components. There's even like French video tours and everything like that. So it's really, I'm really excited to use this curriculum. And then the homework, for each lesson would be those printouts that you would print out the um, practice or the grammar part of it, writing it, things like that. So as a not a, I don't speak French. <laughs> so this was a little intimidating, like I need to find a French curriculum when I don't actually speak French. I can speak Spanish, that's kind of my default. So I'm curious to see how my French turns out when I read something in a foreign language, my default is Spanish. But uh, I'm going to be doing this with my daughter, obviously. It's not something I can just hand to her. It's going to be something led by me, but I feel comfortable with the resources provided in this, in the teacher guide and the online component that I could totally do this. So I'm excited to bring on French and see how that goes. I will definitely keep you guys updated, but that is 
our main component for June. So let's go to July. So for July, we're taking on two extra, so we'll continue, you know, math and language arts, like I talked about. And if foreign language is going great, we'll continue with that as well. But the two new components I'll be taking in is music and personal finance. So music, we haven't really done a lot with, and that's again, my kids are pretty young and I don't wanna do any like, let's look at watercolor pictures of musical instruments and learn all about them. I'm like, I don't think that's really gonna be, it's nice, but I don't think it's really gonna benefit them long-term. Now, both my girls do in Sunday school, they play the bells, so the hand bells. So they do a music program once a month through our church in Sunday school. We have a music Sunday and they learn the bells and they do, you know, they perform in front of the congregation. So reading music, they do have that type of musical education, but we haven't done anything specific in our home. So. This past year, we, we were fortunate enough to get a free piano. Our church was getting rid of some because they have like seven and it costs money to keep them in tune and everything. So they were gracious enough to give us a piano because I've always wanted to learn piano and that's something I'm actually actively working on is learning piano. I try to do a lesson every Sunday. And what I do is I use Hoffman Academy and I've always done the online free version of that and it's worked awesome for me. I think it's really helped. I didn't see a need for the paid version for myself as an adult, but my daughter, now that she's seen me playing the piano and practicing, she wants to do it. That's what musical instrument she wants to try. So I did go ahead and I bought the Hoffman Method um, premium subscription. So it's a year subscription and it was on sale I think it was $143 for the year, uh, but I really like it. It has not, it obviously has the video lessons and everything laid out for you, but it has a lot of music theory, which I think will be really helpful for my daughter. And I, honestly, it's been helpful for me too. I've gone through some of the packets just to work on some of that. And I really enjoy that they have a lot of free stuff, not just piano sheet music, but like flashcards. So like learning your notes. <laughs> so that's something I've been actually using is the piano flashcards and it has different games and everything like that. So we're gonna try to do um, one piano lesson at least a week, but we'll have daily practice um, scheduled in for piano. And then my six year old, I'm not doing any particular music program with her. I don't think that's really necessary unless she's interested. But my 10 year old will be starting Hoffman Academy. The other thing we will be doing is personal finance. Again, this is something we did last summer that worked really well. And I was debating between doing what we did last summer or doing the Evan Moore financial literacy. And looking at the Evan Moore financial literacy, you know, people's flip throughs online. I really like what we did better last year and I don't need to spend $15. I mean, that's financial literacy, right? There's a lot of free options out there. So I'm going to share one of those free options. So what we did last year is we used the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis and they have an entire teacher resource section. So um, what we did is we used different picture books and it came with you know printable lesson plans and then activities for you to do with it. So last year we did, the one I really remember is we did the Splat the Cat Bakes a Cake and the kids got um, little sheets with recipes and they had to bake a cake and they had to do comparing the cost in the grocery store, how much money you have to how much you can purchase, how much does it make per cake. So it was one of those fun activities and you can even go a step farther and go out and actually go to the grocery store and compare prices and make it a real life thing. But I wanna show you really quick one of the things we'll be doing for the, or that we did last year that I remember. So last year, this is one of the books and this is an imagination library book. So we already have that. So one of the nice aspects is a lot of the books used in there are at the public library. So the picture book lessons are already there and the lesson plans are free. So this goes over a bunny who wants to buy something and he has to decide wants versus needs, saving his money and then I'll scroll you the printable really quick of that. And all I did was go to, um, at the homepage, go to resources for teachers and find a specific teacher resource. Over here, I chose the pre-K through fifth grade because that's my age level I'm working with. And the subjects I chose were economics and personal finance. So it gives you different options here. And again, everything's free, but you can see here, here's the spend it lesson. You open that up, you have a lesson PDF. You open your PDF up and it will tell you, you know, the grade level, the concepts you're learning, the objectives, 
has different, you know, visual handouts, different discussion questions, and it walks you through the lesson plan, which I think is really cool and it's completely free and it's that hands-on aspect that a lot of people enjoy. So, so I'm also going to include the link for this, the federalreserveeducation.org. So you go to this website, you go to order publications, and you can actually get physical copies of a bunch of different resources. So you can see Federal Reserve of Atlanta, Federal Reserve of Chicago. So if you want, for example, I didn't want 30 activity books of this. So what you can do is you can click on this and manually order less than 30, or you can order 30 if that's your thing. If you want to see what each of these are, you just click on the resource and search it in the feature and it'll show you what all these things are. But that is another resource we'll be utilizing. So I filled out that little sheet of paper and it does take four to six weeks. It tells you it could take four to six weeks to get the publication. So just be aware of that. But I did get my first box from the Federal Reserve of uh, Dallas. Dallas. So just to give you an idea of the things that come in there. And I have ones coming from other places. I know there's a whole comic book section, but this is kind of a history of money, which I thought would be cool. There's labor, the economy, and money policy. And it tells you on there the kind of ages that it works with, international trade. There's also a lot of infographics, things like that, globalization, free enterprise, and monetary policy, the Federal Reserve, everyday economics. So you can get all these um, resources for free, which I think is great. So definitely check that out. And when I get more boxes, I will definitely uh, do like an unboxing or, or like what resources we'll be using specifically, but we will be utilizing the different things in there. Like I said, there's a whole comic book series that I think my oldest will really like, but you don't need to go out and buy resources, you know, use your library to get the literature books, use the Federal Reserve to get the financial literacy or economic policy, whatever you're trying to learn about in your homeschool, use those resources because one, they're coming from an institution that is, you know, knows what they're talking about. Two, it's all free. So utilize those. That's the point of financial literacy. You utilize, this, utilize the resources you have. So those are curriculum wise, how that will work. And again, I'll make that scheduled video. That will be the next one up showing how I'm incorporating it all. But as far as, you know, things outside homeschool, because we have a, it's a lot more relaxed during the summer, but we still get all of our work done, which will be great. Now I did want to share what my three-year-old will be doing. Now he has the option, of course, of joining us for things, for group subjects. I know he'll join us for art, philosophy, maybe, maybe not but he does enjoy doing his own thing. So my only plan for my three-year-old besides, you know, his summer reading program that he'll do at the library aged it, that's aged for him, is he has enjoyed doing calendar time. So I saw a calendar, it was probably, I think, an old Target one that was clearanced out in a store by me. So I bought it and we started that in May. So he gets to put the date in, we go over days of the week, we sing the song, all that good stuff. And he's actually been really enjoying that and he likes his calendar time for just him. So we will continue calendar probably through the summer. And then the other things I'm just incorporating for him is I've talked about the preschool or the busy book and he likes doing that, it's tracing and the little sticker things. But I actually got this out. This is something I used with my six year old when she's not quite ready for that like full on preschool program, but wants to do something. And this is just a collection of things I've printed um, from, you know, when she was little. And it's just the little sticky Velcro thing. So you match the penguin hat to the scarf. So he's actually really been enjoying that. This one is the same. It's different colored plates. And you uh, match the gingerbread to the plate. And what's funny is I can tell that this was, you know, back when I had my first child because I laminated everything. <laughs> And I was so into it and excited and I would definitely not go through the effort of laminating these types of things for my youngest right now. So we have different activities, so different counting activities. We have a, you know, we do five monkeys jumping on the bed and we replace the number. We have different color sorting activities. So it's just a plethora 
of basic, you know, colors, counting, shapes. We do have a couple of these Montessori. I have the tubes where they match the animal. We do also have Montessori cards, the three-part cards where you mess, match the name and the object and all that. We have some fun um, recognizing numbers because he really loves pizza. So I think he'll actually like this one where he puts the little pizza toppings. You can see here the pizza toppings are different letters and he matches those up. Does he do, you know, a perfectly God, no. He's pretty much just spreading it um, all over the paper at this point, but he feels like he's doing something and it's solely for him. So it's really feeding into him and his favorite actually is matching, um, because he likes trains, he likes to match the outlines. So I have the um, outlines of everything in here and he matches the animals on there. So just simple little activities that I've already had prepared for when my youngest was just getting to that age of wanting to participate but not right ready for a full-on <laughs> curriculum and it's working that stamina of you know him sitting down and be able to do certain work because he's not a busy bag kid at all he doesn't really like those types of things but I find that you know he grabs his folder every single day and he wants to do it while his sisters are doing their work he wants to do something he wants to feel like he's a big kid too and it's funny, he doesn't choose like one activity out of this folder. He tries to do most of all of the activities um, in the folder. So while I'm doing math with my six year old, he's on the other side of me doing one of these activities and he just keeps going and going until he's done. So that is his plan for, you know, summer homeschooling as well. So far as classes, so my kids will of course be doing the summer reading program, which is full of options this year. There's book club, there's Lego STEM classes. So they have a lot of options. I think we're gonna be at the library like three times a week in June just because of the plethora of offerings. So they of course will do summer reading program. My oldest also does a horse book club. And then my youngest will probably do gymnastics this summer as well. On top of that, the kids have vacation Bible school. So there's a lot of activities. We, you know, we go camping in July as well. We'll be doing that for a week. So there's a lot of things going on. We will continue our co-op. We don't have structured activities during the summer. We switch it to just playground meetup once a week, which will be fun too. So we have a lot of fun things planned this summer, but also a lot of curriculum and learning opportunities as well. And of course we'll go to the zoo and hopefully the museum. We had hoped to go to the museum um, during spring break, but of course all the kids got a stomach bug. So that was off the list, but we do have memberships to those. So I do hope to incorporate those as well. But that is the bulk of what we'll be doing for June, July, and usually August starts our new school year. But it seems like a lot, but it's a lot of fun, interesting. We're excited to do these things work. So if you have any questions or if you'd like to see anything more specifically, let me know down below. If not, thank you for watching.